everybody. Welcome to uh, one of our indoor videos here. This is going to be Mexican Black King Snakes A to Z. We've got a pretty unique opportunity right now today. We've got um, some Max Mexican Black King Snake eggs hatching right now. We've got some that just shed out. They hatched about 10 days ago. And then I've actually got a clutch of eggs being laid right now. So we're going to get into all that in just a second. But I'm first going to talk about Mexican Black King Snakes in general, what it is that has pushed their demand so high uh, lately, at least in, as in my opinion and then uh, just like basic care needs and whatnot. So I wanna start out with um, the fact that they are definitely in very high demand right now. And I get a lot of people at shows and stuff telling me, hey, I remember when those things were like 60 to 80 bucks years back. And that is true. They've obviously gone way up in price since then. And we can all remember back to when uh, Bob Clark was selling albino ball pythons for 8,000 bucks. You know, the things change. Supply changes, demand changes. It's just basic economics. So right now, Mexican black snake, king snakes are pretty high on the, on the uh, demand list and for a really good reason, in my opinion. Uh, we've got a lot of great things about Mexican black king snakes. First off is their color, of course. People like a jet black snake, especially Mexican black king snakes. They've got this awesome iridescence to them. Um, even non-snake people, when they come over here and they want to check out snakes, they look at the Mexican Black Kings, they're really nice ones, they're like, wow, that thing is awesome. And then you flip them over and on their belly, they have this really nice iridescence. So we'll try to capture some of that. We'll look at some of our adults here. Um, another thing about them is their feeding response, which is great for me as a breeder. When a bunch of baby snakes hatch out, there's certain ones, or born live for that matter, there are certain species that can be really difficult to get going on. Um, readily accessible food items like mice, pinkies, rat pinkies, whatever. Mexican black kings uh, are very good eaters right off the bat most of the time. I seldom have a problem with them. That's in stark contrast to say like gray banded kings or pyros or even getting into some of the boas and other milk snakes and stuff. They have to require scented pinkies for a while. They won't want to eat right off the bat. You might have to feed them lizards first. Our Dominican red mountain boas are notorious lizard eaters to begin with. So they can be kind of a pain. Mexican blacks seem to be really, really easy. All the ones I've hatched out are almost always automatic feeders. So that's another huge bonus. The other huge bonus of them is when I compare them to some of the other king snakes and milk snakes, um, they are great eaters, but they are not overly food aggressive. My California king snakes, and I love California king snakes, but they can be food aggressive at times, especially when they get a little bit older, some size on them, breeding season and all that, they will just come right out of the cage with their mouth wide open and they don't care what they grab. They just want to grab it to try to eat it, whether it's your finger or a mouse or whatever. And uh, that's just the way they are. The Mexican black kings, I don't really see that. The females, especially when they're uh, producing eggs, will get very hungry, but they seldom come out with reckless abandon, just ready to bite anything and they'll calm down pretty quickly once they know that they are not being fed. So that's one thing uh, that I find standing out differently from Mexican blacks versus like the California kings and, and uh, Florida kings and some of the other popular king snake species out there. Mexican black kings stay in a pretty small cage for their, relatively speaking, throughout their life. They don't get that big, maybe four feet long. So they're a pretty easy and practical snake um, to have as a pet. So all these things, all these factors have pushed this species to be very high in demand lately. Um, the last like five years, they've, they've really gone through the roof. So many good reasons. So let's get right into it. We're going to take out a couple of the adults that we have here and uh, kind of show them off a little bit. Okay. So we got one of our adults here. This is a male. So you can see pretty tractable, pretty easy to handle. And these guys aren't even handled that often. It's not like I'm holding these things all the time, but this is just right out of the cage. One of our breeders, really nice looking. And let's see if we can get a shot of some of that iridescence on the belly there. They're just absolutely gorgeous. And when it comes to Mexican black king snakes, it's totally a preference thing on what you want. But typically as babies, they're going to have some white freckles or specks on them, white and yellow specks on them. They're going to have a little bit of, uh, of coloration, not all. And a higher grade baby, typically higher grade, again, it's, this is a personal preference, but higher grade babies are going to be really black. They might have a little bit of uh, white on their chin, but that's it. And uh, the, typically the blacker the snake, the more valuable it's going to be. So if you're at a show or something like that and you notice that one over here is, this one's going for a way more than this one over here. To me, they look just the same. Well, if you lift that snake up and you look underneath its chin, 
you may find a lot more white or even or uh, or yellow all the way down into their belly sometimes black or uh, yellow and white flecks up their side but let's look at this one right here this is a really this is about as high grade of a mexican black as you can get this animal is completely jet black there's not even a speck of white on his chin and most of our breeders are just like this we're trying to produce the nicest ones we can but again, it's a personal preference. Some of the babies that are born with a lot of coloration will eventually fade out and still be a very jet black snake. So it has nothing to do with the health of the animal or anything like that. But typically, the more jet black they are with the, le with the, the least amount of, of specks and stuff, they're going to fetch a higher price. Just so easy to handle, so mellow most of the time. And if I had a mouse in my hand, he'd probably take it right out of my hand, yet he's not showing any aggression at all toward a hand being in there because he really kind of knows the difference. And when I talk to them rel uh, relating to cow kings and Florida kings, which can be super food aggressive, uh, there's just there's quite a bit of difference that I see anyway with uh, the adult Mexican black kings versus some of those other species. So let me get into some of our babies here that are going on right now. We'll start at the beginning. We're going to look, pull this girl out right here. She's been in her nest box. I saw the first couple eggs this morning, so hopefully um, she's got them all out. We're just going to like kind of tiptoe around here just in case she hasn't laid them all yet. Don't want to disturb her. Looks like she's throwing all sorts of stuff out of her nest box. And this is the second clutch for this girl this year. They all look really, really good. She made a complete mess. Check it out. Just like that, looks like she got them all. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At least 10 perfect eggs in there. Awesome, good job, mama. I'm just gonna leave her in there for now. We'll very gently and gingerly pull those out in a little bit and get them set up and in the incubator. That's great. And then we're gonna fast forward about 70 days and we've got another clutch that is hatching right now. And we kind of go slow here. Looks like we got one out of the egg, one with just his head out. We got a couple out of the egg. Hey guys. How's it going? You see the difference in the shape of the eggs here after a full term incubation. They really start to swell up. They absorb that moisture and the baby will actually grow inside of the egg. This one here has got the egg pipped. This one, oh, that's an empty egg there. These ones haven't quite pipped out yet. Come here, little fella. And he's not pulling me in here. Come here, buddy. And that is a brand new Probably just a couple hours old. Mexican black king snake. They look really nice. And they've got kind of a matte look to them when they first come out of the egg. And after about 10 days, they'll shed out their very first shed. They're going to look totally different after. And I've got some over here that I've already shed out. Okay, and we got a couple that just shed out. So this was after their very first shed. Let's see what they look like. You can see a pretty stark difference between that kind of matte colored babies and these are just beautiful little babies. Just perfect in every way. Great thing with these guys is that they're born fairly large. Some of the other kings and milk snakes um, and colubrids in general can be so small when they're born. There, it's another challenge on getting them to feed. But these guys are born pretty big and robust. They're definitely big enough to take down a, uh, a normal-sized pinky right away.
Okay, I just want to touch on how I keep uh, the babies here. I find Mexican black kings uh, to be very hardy all around, babies included. So I have a very simple, this is a, out of a vision rack, um, hatchling tub rack. Very simple, I got a water dish on one side here. This is just a little pipe coupler that uh, a small deli cup sits inside of. It's very easy to change out, clean all the time, and helps them from tipping over the water dish. Uh, paper towels is a substrate, works great for the babies. It's very easy to clean, and they don't ingest anything on accident, though I've kept them on sandy chips and other stuff too, and they've had no problem with that either. Um, one hide here on the back end. This is just some packing material that I found. Works great. Um, anything can work, whether you want a ceramic one or a wood one or a one made out of a toilet paper roll, it doesn't really matter. I put a little bit of sphagnum moss around here. It kind of helps to keep uh, a little bit of humidity and retain a little bit of moisture. Back end of the uh, enclosure here is about 81 degrees roughly all the time. And the front of the enclosure regulates with the, with the room as well, like 84 in the afternoon and maybe 78 um, in the evening and at night. So it cools down a little bit on the front. They can sort of thermoregulate themselves and that's important to have your if you're uh, using a glass aquarium, like a five gallon aquarium is perfect size for a small baby. Use the small heat pads. Um, hello. A small heat pad on one side, water bowl on the other. You can use a couple different heights depending on the size of the aquarium that you choose. But uh, just have some places for them to cruise around. Get out of uh, sight. That's where you, use, you will usually find them, although this one right here is kind of out and about. Um, and that's about it. Simpler the better on the, on the neonate enclosures for sure and they will thrive. I keep most of my adults in 28 quart tubs, which is the equivalent of about a 20 gallon tank as far as surface area goes on the bottom, which is where they're gonna spend most of their time. Um, a, a substantial enough water bowl to where they can get in and totally submerge if they want to. I don't normally see them soaking, but occasionally you will. Um, a couple hides in there. Any kind of bedding can potentially work. Repti bark, sandy chips. I use sandy chips for my colubrids. Um, as far as heat goes, this room typically in summertime months, a warm afternoon might get 84 degrees or so. Cools down into the mid 70s. Um, at night, I have heat tape on the back set to 81. So the the back never gets cooler than about 80 to 81, and the front will uh, will. Uh, you know, just kind of room temperature in this room typically is pretty warm. They all do great that way. Haven't had any problems with that. Um, so anything in that 78 to 84 range is going to be great for them. The females obviously, or uh, the males and females rather, do hibernate during the winter time. You don't have to do that. It's just kind of uh, if something if you're going to want to breed them, you're going to need to cool them down. But that's not really necessary if you're just keeping one as a pet. You can keep them right at that temperature all year long and honestly they could fluctuate quite a bit more than that. I would just worry about them getting too hot more than getting too cold. Snakes are actually pretty resilient when it comes to a, a cold snap or something like that. They get cooled down one night or two nights. It's not going to really bother them for the most part. But if they get too hot, that's when you can really run into problems. So make sure that you don't have too much heat going on in your cage. Make sure you've got a thermostat set that's going to shut off your heating element if it happens to get really hot in your house. Uh, they do not need ultraviolet lighting. Um, no snakes need ultraviolet lighting for that matter, but uh, if you want to put a heat lamp or whatever like that, you can just make sure that they don't get too hot. It's not the kind of lamp that's going to sit right over the top of them and cook them because heat is uh, definitely a factor. Um, a lot of snakes that, that, that will die in captivity, they just simply get too hot. People think, well, this snake lives in the desert where it's 100 degrees, but when it's 100 degrees, you don't find them outside ever. Um, very, very seldom, at least not not king snakes. You'll find some racers maybe, but um, you know, out in the desert or whatever, wherever they may live, if it's getting that hot, they're underground, they're deep in a crack, whatever it is. So be careful you don't get your snakes too hot. So anyway, they're all around eating. Care is very basic. Size is usually not an issue. Kind of the perfect size. Um, they're ready feeders on rodents and very docile from what I see in all my adults. As babies are going to be a little squirrely of course as most baby snakes are but once they get um, you know a little size and confidence on them they're very tractable, very easy to handle and all around great pets. So if you have any questions reach out. We do have some available right now and uh, we'll hopefully have some more here soon. 
Again, they are going pretty quick, but uh, we should have some available here. So reach out if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.